atrial fibrillation is a turbulent chaotic beating of the heart uh, which can cause in the long term severe consequences including increased risk of stroke and unfortunately death uh, to the point that this is considered one of the most important causes of morbidity and mortality in western countries it has been speculated and now confirmed by preliminary evidence that it is related to changes in conductivity of the heart uh, so the heart instead of beating regularly like it should presents almost a short circuit inside which causes the atria to not perform as they should now here's the problem we know that it is related to a change in conductivity, but there's no way of measuring this, not to mention localizing it. And this is where we came into play, so to speak, because if we can design, we thought a few years ago, an instrument that can probe the heart, create a map of its conductivity and point a, a doctor or a surgeon to this point, look, this is the point with anomalous conductivity, this is the part of the heart which is causing the problem, then they maybe can diagnose this atrial fibrillation uh, timely, they can treat it better, and more importantly, they will have surgery guidance. To date, no currently deployed diagnostic tool can map uh, the distribution of conductivity in live tissues uh, in a safe and non-invasive way. We were uh, a physics and astronomy and UCLQ here at UCL, uh, the first group to propose and demonstrate this technology. So the merge of, on the one hand, atomic magnetometers, which is a quantum sensor capable of extreme sensitivity for measuring magnetic fields, but they can do this at room temperature and in a normal environment without any magnetic shielding. And we were also uh, trying to merge these with a technique called magnetic induction tomography, which is a technique known since probably the early 2000s, uh, whereby a small uh, magnetic field excites a response from an object and a suitable magnetic field sensors pick up the response. This response is proportional, uh, uh, among many other things, to the electrical conductivity of the object. Unfortunately, to date, sensors were not good enough to perform uh, electromagnetic induction uh, imaging or magnetic induction tomography with biological samples of small volumes. So what we did is to merge what we did best, uh, atomic physics and quantum sensing, to this new opportunity to provide an answer uh, for the healthcare professionals who approached us. So what we do normally is we start with an atomic vapour. Uh, in our case we're working with rubidium, but any alkali atom really will work. Uh, kept at room temperature or very close to, to that. In these conditions, atomic spins are randomly orientated. You can think of any atom as a tiny compass flying around at 300 meters per second, roughly, uh, and randomly orientated. But by using lasers, and in this case, performing what we called in the field optical pumping, we can align these spins, uh, effectively polarizing the atomic vapor and making it sensitive or extremely sensitive to external magnetic fields. Uh, then we use uh, a small radio frequency field which coherently drives the spin. So we force the spin to precess around a known magnetic field and we know what frequency they will be processed at, which is called the Lama frequency. The whole phenomenon is called Lama precession, which is extremely well known and extremely predictable. And here's the catch, because now we want the signal from our heart to be perturbing this motion. So any different, any deviations we will measure between the predicted motion and the actual precession of the spins caused by uh, the field response from the heart will be the signal we're looking for. Well, if I'm allowed to dream, <laughs> I should say that I would like to see some years uh, down the line to uh, see a prototype of uh, our device being deployed in a clinic ward and being tested by healthcare professionals and hopefully this will help them in uh, identifying the causes of atrial fibrillation, in diagnosing atrial fibrillation in a more efficient way and more importantly in treating it in a better way.